Okay, everyone, I, we're going to get started. It's a little past two. There still might be a few people joining us. I see that most of you have your lines muted. So if you have any questions at the end, just remember to unmute your line and, and we can certainly answer any questions that you have. So over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes, I'm just going to give a general overview of JMS Plate Settler and our Plate Settler pilot system. And we're going to start with so the pilot system is designed to mimic a full-scale flock and sedimentation basin. And this schematic just shows you what that system looks like. So our unit includes inclined stainless steel plate settlers, horizontal paddle wheel flocculators, uh, stainless steel baffle walls, and also our Megavac sludge removal system. Um, this is just what the system typically looks like. So it's a full stainless steel system, it's designed for 40 to 110 gallons per minute. We can test different application rates on the plate settlers, typically ranging from 0.2 to 0.5. And also we can look at testing different efficiency factors. The plates that are in this system are four and a half feet wide and four and a half feet long. They're at a 55 degree angle. And when all plates are in use, there's about 275 square feet of effective projected horizontal surface area. This just shows a, another view of the system. We can kind of look at the, in, the components inside the stainless steel tank. And there are mega, uh, mega flocks, three stages. So you have stage one, two, and three. Um, all of those stages are adjustable on a VFD. Uh, we also have a hoseless sludge removal system with a control panel. The control panel has a PLC and a HIM unit and an actuated valve. So those are the main components that make up the plate settler uh, pilot system. Uh, this next slide uh, talks a little bit about, it's a graph that, that gets a little deeper into some of the technical. So this was used on a recent pilot study that we did in South Carolina. And you can see at, up top there are influent flow rates, there's plate settler surface area, the number of active plates, the loading or application rate and efficiency factor. And then we also look at all the different retention times in the different zones of the system. So this is mimicking or showing you a system that ran at 55 gallons per minute with all the plates um, active and we were simulating a 0.2 application rate. And as you would work your way through that, you would see we started blocking plates off a couple months into the study to look at different application rates going through the system. Um, also, that allowed us to mimic and look at some different flock retention times throughout the, uh, the pilot study itself. So there's a chart like this provided for any pilot study. Uh, this particular one wanted to look at a flow range of 55 to 80 gallons per minute, which allowed us to look at 0.2 to 0.5 loading rate. And that's pretty the it's a very wide um, application rate or loading rate for plate settlers. So this gave a really good understanding of plate settler performance across a wide range of flows and application rates. Uh, this next slide here shows midway through the pilot testing, you can see the image to the right here um, where you see this dark area that's just turbidity that's settled and those are actually areas where the engineer blocked off plates he blocked off those plates to simulate a higher loading rate so just wanted to show you guys what that typically looks like when you're blocking off plates to to basically have a larger or higher application rate Overall dimensions of the system, so it's 20 feet long, seven and a half feet wide, eight and a half feet tall. Uh, when it's dry, when it shows up on site, it weighs 12,000 pounds. When you fill it with water, it's gonna weigh 75,000 pounds. All we need is 110 single phase power uh, to connect to this system. Uh, you need four inch uh, PVC tubing and piping to connect to the influent. Uh, there is six inch effluent coming out of the system. The sludge uh, discharge line is three inch. So 
this is basic fundamental information we provide to the engineer and the owner because uh, a lot of these scenarios they're, they're taking care of so they're responsible for unloading the system getting power to the system and then plumbing it to influent and effluent um, discharges general cost of the system um, typically um, two thousand five hundred dollars per month typically these run you know three to nine months in that realm we also ask that uh, the customer pays for all freight and field service uh, costs picture of what it looks like when it ships to the site so it's on a drop dra uh, drop deck trailer uh, JMS arranges all the freight and this picture I think kind of illustrates a, you know pretty well what the system looks like when it gets there um, this next slide shows what it's going to look like when we're unloading it so uh, the customer will need a crane of adequate size to lift the system off the trailer uh, typically that's a, a minimum six ton crane uh, this this is a really good example of a crane that we like to use and and recommend so you can see the the lifting areas are tied into eye hooks that are already on the tank and when you have a crane operator he knows how to jig this this unload uh, we have a video of it it literally took 30 seconds for them to unload place the system on the pad and really you need to make sure that you have a pad about 12 foot wide 25 feet long and it needs to be capable of handling 75,000 pounds so we recommend that to be concrete asphalt but most of them have been stone a stone base of adequate thickness has worked very well just a picture of some leveling that may need to occur typically you want the tank to be plus or minus about an eighth of an inch that gets everything level and set up um, you do have adjustability in the v-notch weirs to fine-tune uh, we want the v-notch weirs to be within plus or minus one thirty second Uh, the setup of the system so this just shows a system that's fully set up and just wanted to go through this a little bit the engineer contractor or plant are typically the the people that set up the system and what that means is you can see there's pvc plumbing and piping here that's the responsible for that's responsible from the engineer contractor or plant that's on site you can also see there are a lot of influent chem addition points located here all of that is handled by the on-site people. Uh, we will be on site to inspect, provide any training. Uh, most all of that training centers around our plate settler and pilot unit itself. So we'll set up and go through the control panel. We'll make sure the sludge removal system is working properly. Uh, the flocculators, we'll go through that to show the operators how they can adjust the velocity gradient. And last, we'll check to make sure the weirs are within level. Uh, another image of what the sludge removal system looks like. When our field service guy is on site, he's going to spend you know, a good amount of time making sure that this is calibrated, making sure it's set up to run. Typically, we start out with running this twice a day, 12 hours apart. And they will run this back and forth across the system to get its calibration and make sure everything's working fine. Typical variables that are tested. Um, so a big thing for our unit, we're looking for the plate settler loading rate. And we're looking for basically finding the optimum loading rate. And that will tell us how many plates we need to put in the full scale system. But some other things that the engineer is always studying and looking at um, is chem addition. So they'll always uh, try different chem dosages, uh, different chemicals. Uh, sometimes we'll even switch complete um, from ferric to alum or, or vice versa. We look at different velocity gradients based on the different chemical addition. Um, you know, move that up and down, all, of, all the while collecting data to see how that it affects the overall performance of the plant. Downstream of our pilot unit, um, on every pilot I've done over the last decade, we're always feeding filters or membranes and when they're when the engineer is doing this pilot study it's typically not just for the plate settlers themselves a lot of times a big focus is put on the filters downstream or the membranes so this system's designed for 110 gallons per minute and that can 
feed two membranes uh, running side by side so they can look at two different technologies there. Uh, the duration of these pilots are typically six to nine months. A lot of the reason for that is they want to get a different um, makeup of the water characteristics and temperature coming into the system. They always like to you know, pick up summer, fall, and winter if, if they can. Example results. So this is from a recent pilot study and just want to show a little graph of some of the um, different parameters that they were measuring. Um, and we just kind of put it in order here. A lot of times we're focused on turbidity so that's a big measurable for how the plate settlers are performing. You know, we always talk about what is the percent removal and, and how is it removing turbidity. In this scenario here, we were removing 89% of the turbidity. It was coming in very low. So 4NTU is pretty low, so they had a good clean water source. And this is just an average period over 30 days. Uh, throughout the uh, several months of this study, there were a couple areas where they would spike the influent turbidity just to see how it would handle. And what we see is if, if the influent would go up to 40 NTU, we were still maintaining about 0.5 or you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 effluent for the NTU. This particular pilot also looked at, you know, E. coli, you know, different iron, manganese, you know, TOC, pH. So they were looking at a lot of different parameters at that plant. And I thought this, uh, this graph kind of shows you pretty well how the system performed overall. Uh, recently, uh, I'm just going to take you guys through an example pilot study. And so this plant is not too far from us. It's in South Carolina. Uh, the plant contracted Black & Veatch to evaluate um, plate settler technology for upgrading their existing sed basins. So the goal for this test was basically test all the different parameters I mentioned earlier, and they were looking at optimizing the design before going full scale. Um, ultimately, their goal was to increase the plant capacity using the existing basins that you see there. So the basins are you know, pretty long. They have a retention time in the four hour range. So the, the basins are plenty big for what they need. So they're gonna get a tremendous amount of water or more water out of these existing basins just by adding plate settlers to them. So that was the, the main goal that they were looking at. This is just a PNID of what the uh, pilot looked like. So you had the raw water source. Um, anything in green is what they were adding. So basically running a complete small uh, drinking water plant. So they added caustic, PAC, alum, polymer. Um, all of those dosages were changed throughout the life cycle of this study and results will be analyzed and it will allow them to zoom in on what is the right chemical dosage, what's, what are the right chemicals, do they need polymer, all things like that. So on the influent line, they always kept track of the pH and temperature and also the influent turbidity and TOC. Those are really three of the biggest parameters that were always uh, looking at when it comes to the pilot study. On the effluent side, again, they looked at pH, temperature, turbidity, and TOC. So they want to look at turbidity removal and TOC removal. From there, they fed three different um, filters that were pilots as well. So you can see filter one, two, and three. They did a 60-inch anthracite, a 20-inch anthracite with six or eight, nine inches of sand, and then the last one, they did 24 anthracite, 12 inches of sand. Uh, they did add chlorine to the influent to the filters. And then coming off the effluent side of the filters, again, they looked at turbidity and TOC. So in general, the results we've seen on average, the plate settler system was providing typically less than 0.5 NTU to the filters. Uh, all of their filters were in the realm of coming off at 0 0.05, 0 0.04 NTU. So all of that stuff's right in line with a normal full-scale uh, water treatment plant. Just a picture of the full-scale system. Um, so here, this tent is their chem feed tent, and they had 55-gallon drums with all the different chemicals that they were going to add to the system. 
Uh, from there, they plumbed those over and they just did an inline mix right into the effluent line. And that's how they added chemicals to the system. Here's another view of the tent. So you can see the, uh, the drums of different chemicals. And here are all your chem feed pumps. Um, they also had all their turbidity meters here and all the different meters to determine what level of flow and dosage they were going to put into the system. Just an image of the three different filters that they tested. Um, so this was actually the, the city of Columbia provided these filters on loan to Black and Beach uh, for this particular plant. And this is probably one of the more thorough jobs I've seen done as far as testing three different style filters. And I think they learned a lot from that because obviously when you're upgrading a water treatment plant, you know, putting plate settlers in is going to allow you to get more, more water out of the existing flock basins and set basins. But just as importantly, they're going to have to upgrade their downstream, uh, downstream filters to keep up with the increased design flow coming out of the plate settlers. Uh, just a quick overview here. So again, this was a pilot study that was over a duration of six to seven months. Um, we focused on a wide range of plate settler application rates. Uh, I know Black and Veatch was very interested in the chemical additions and looking at what chemicals work the best at what dosages. And at the end of all of this, there was a lot of time and effort put into the different filter configuration that they were going to work on. Um, so we're waiting on the final reports and permission from the city to share the official data. So we'll probably do another webinar like this when we have permission from this particular client to share all the data. Um, I've seen most of the data, just waiting for the final report. So in general, the information that I got from the engineer, from the owner, the plate settler system consistently provided effluent quality that exceeded their expectations. So, so that was good. Um, but even um, exceeded expectations when they started looking at higher application rates when they were blocking off plates and, and looking at how hard could they push the system. So that is a, a quick overview of our plate settler pilot system. And again, I'll probably do another one where we get a little deeper into the actual engineering and results coming out of the system. But I thought it'd be a good time just to let everyone know the systems available, you know, general parameters, you know, size, weight, what it takes to operate it, things like that I thought would be a, a good opportunity to share with you guys. So.